my thoughts back. Oh, there I, you go. Yeah, I have now, to get them lined there, back up with the Word of God. The, the, there, you know, there's a verse about bringing every thought captive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every thought being brought captive. This morning you said God's grace is sufficient to cover anything that comes against us. I said that? Yes, you did. Or was that in Sunday school? No, that was in church. <laughs> but I, I also heard today that much of what I was sharing today was in Sunday school. Yes, it was. Well, and you got this one Chronicles verse here. That's in Our Lady's Bible study, you know, about Jehovah. Jehoshaphat, yeah, uh, being anxious because he was going to face that large battle. Yeah, and the Lord said, "He's in charge. I am with you. You know, and take this amount of men with you." <clears throat> but that's about being anxious for nothing. And so this goes along with all this right now. Be anxious for nothing. And how you do that? No, God is with you. And take every thought captive when you start getting anxious. Okay. All right. So, are you worried about your family's safety and security in such uncertain times? Sometimes, yes. Yes. Because I know they're Concerned not worried about it. Because mm -hmm. I know, like the call I got this morning. <clears throat> you know, it wasn't good news. I'm concerned, but I'm praying. Like I had to tell one of them that I called today. I said, there's not anything that we haven't tried to do to help. Now all we can do is let go. And I said, and give her to God. I said, I gave her to God this morning. Now, I said, I just have to leave my hands off of it. I says, and pray and trust him. But, yeah, I started feeling really anxious. And well, had says, to have you ever had this happen, sister? Have you ever had this where maybe someone calls says, you have to do something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. I'm praying. <laughs> I am praying. That's all I know to do right See, now. And, and you think about this because when uh, people recognize you, I mean, that that's the number one thing that we can do. Now, there are times when you don't just pray. Yeah. Um, you know, for instance, uh, what, what's that verse Brother Harold talks about? Uh, if if uh, someone asked you for your, your coat, give them your cloak too? Yes. Amen? Absolutely. It's in the book of Luke. But notice this. That's because, the, what's this? The, and, and listen, I, I liken it to this. I always I tie these two together where you see the, uh, the disciples are coming to the gate called Beautiful in Acts chapter 3. Right? Yeah. And they say, silver and gold have we none. Now... <laughs> I can still remember. But what we, but what we had, we probably I can, But you know, when they came in, how many think they had an offering because they were coming into the, mm -hmm. uh, they were going to church. How many think they had an offering prepared, right? Mm -hmm. So would you say that they were lying? It they wasn't an Ananias and Sapphira thing, was it? Yeah. No. it? Because the money that they had prepared was prepared for their offering. It, right. you know, presuming that they were doing what would be traditional, right? Mm -hmm. But silver and gold have we none. But what we have, what did they say? Gladly share with you. We freely give. We gladly give this to you. Amen. So, they did something. They prayed, and what happened? Healed. Healed. Somebody say healed. Healed. <clears throat> and see right here, this one verse, second, uh, in second Chronicles chapter twenty, the last part of verse twelve. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. And we don't know what to do. No. So there we go. Now, and that's, here's the thing. When you don't know what to do, some folks are just going to do something, even if they don't know what to do. What? i got to do something. Have you ever heard this? I've got to do something, even if it's wrong. What, really? Let me... <laughs> is it going to help, or is it going to make the things wrong worse? wrong just adds more to it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so... The God of Jacob is with us also. You said that this morning. So let's 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 kind of go down through this because um, first off, adversity is a fact of life. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if if you took some notes this morning, mm -hmm. uh, as you went through there, did you get anything in that section? Adversity is a fact of life. Uh, it takes courage and stamina. God has ordained us to live in this time and day, so that's a fact of life. Uh huh. And of course, we know from John chapter sixteen, verse thirty-three. What did he say? I have told you. I've told you these things. Mm -hmm. I've told you these things, so that you may have peace. And you're thinking, wait a minute. I, I see the trouble all around me. You've told me all. I'm supposed to have peace with this, whatever it is. If it's I a calamity coming your way. It's disaster. Disaster's on the way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, maybe it's the end of your life as you knew it. You know, this is the new normal type of stuff. Um, in this world, you will have trouble. That's, wait, just to be clear, 
that is normal. Mm -hmm. In this world, you'll have trouble. But he says, but take heart. Take heart. Why? I've overcome the world. And I shared that verse this morning from Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. And uh, it's actually, for me, it, it was a turning point, I'll say, in my life. And the whole thing is, have I not commanded you to be strong and encourage? Do not be afraid. Do not be, dis, dis, uh, do not be discouraged. Neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Um, and, of course, God speaking again in Deuteronomy, uh, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For the Lord your God, who goes with you, he will not leave you or forsake you. And now Moses, again, he summons Joshua. And he said to him, be strong and courageous, for you shall go, listen, you shall go with this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall put them uh, in possession of it. What choice is You shall put them in possession of it. Did you, did you catch that? He didn't, say, he didn't say, listen, you're going to take possession. No, you're going to put them in possession of this land, of the promise that God gave. What, what, if, what if you thought of it like this, and that's kind of how it is. What if I told you that God has put, listen, God has, uh, has given you a promise, and I'm putting you in possession of it. I don't, I'm not taking your promise. I can't give you your promise. I can't secure your promise. Only you can do that with God. Does that make sense? Yep. And he goes on and says, And he will be with you. See, the Lord who goes before you, he will be with you. He will not leave or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. So when you read the things like this in the Bible, but you have to look and say, Boy, how bad could it be? What did I say this morning? How bad could it be? How bad could it be? How terrible could it be? How much trouble could there, you know, how much <laughs> calamity could be coming our way? I don't, I, and the only thing I put is that we can still thrive, no matter through what God brings us our way, or allows us to come our way. See, we can count on the Lord. I'll ask again, how many of you went through things that you never thought you'd ever go through? How bad could it, how bad did it get? How bad was it? Pretty rough there for a, a little bit. I mean, seriously, th um, uh, how bad did it get? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm not going. I'm not going. Here's the thing. So sometimes you need to look back before you can look forward. Right. You say, well, Pastor, that's kind of contra counterproductive. Why? Because Paul said he forgot those things that were behind him and he pushed forward. But here's the thing: he never forgot what he was delivered from. Right. He remembered what God had done for him. What he did. He remembered, which is, he remembered what God did for the people of Israel before he ever was. And you know what? When he remembered that, that's when he found his comfort, his confidence, and he found courage. You go in the scripture, and, and uh, the, uh, there was one writer, he says, though, though he slay me, still will I serve him. Amen? Now, though who slay me? The Lord. But I'm still going to serve him. So the idea of, this, of the terrible times, the perilous times, as, as some of the terms are, or the, or the things that could come your way, the calamity, the disaster, the destruction, the heartache, the heartbreak, the thing that, that some of us has have already had it come our way. But he says, I'm telling you these things. See, there are often times when I've spoken to people and, um, and it's just like it passed. You know, it you know, you, you, you tell them, listen, here's what needs to happen. If this doesn't happen, this is going to happen. Uh, you know, I mean, and, and a lot of times, sometimes they really pay attention. Other times, it's like a few years later, this, I said, well, I tried to tell you about this, but you didn't, apparently didn't listen. You know, kids are like that, too. And once in a while, you got to let the, let, let the kids do what the kids are going to do. You can't always intervene. You can't always be there for them. Somebody say, uh-oh. But look at this. When we think about what could happen to us, the thing I used this morning, I said, you know, as, as, as terrible as it could be was tectonic. It could be like an earthquake. It could be a volcano. But he says, therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth is removed. 